Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. In another video, we talked about 1 over x. What is the difference of the 1 over x and the 1 over x squared? Remember, f of x is just y. If I plug in a positive value for x and I square it, it's positive. So y is going to equal positive numbers, which is why all of our points, when the x's are positives, I go up to get to my graph, which means the y's are also positive. If I plug in a negative value for x, so that my x's, I'm going to the left, but when I square it, I get a positive number, y will equal positive numbers again. So to get to my graph, I would have to go up to get to the y. It has similar asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. But if you look at this graph, when is that undefined? Remember how we found our vertical asymptote in a previous video? When does that denominator equal zero? Well, it's when x is zero. And we still have our horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Let's talk a little bit about end behavior. As my x's approach positive infinity, my f of x, my graph, this red function here, is leveling off. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's approaching the line y equals zero. My f of x, my y's, are approaching zero. Looking to the left of the graph, as my x's get smaller, as my x's are approaching negative infinity, what are my y's doing? Are my y's going up? Are the y's going down? No, my y's, my f of x, is approaching zero. What's happening in the middle of the graph? Well, as my x's are approaching zero from the right side or from the positives, my graph, my f of x, the y's are getting bigger, bigger, bigger. And actually on the left side, as my x approaches zero from the left, my y's are going up, up, up there also. Well, let's talk about the domain and the range of this graph. The domain, it seems like my x's are included from negative infinity. Oh, I got to take a break at zero. It's undefined there. And then the domain starts again, right after zero to positive infinity. What about the range? There aren't any y's that are negative. The y's do not start until right after zero, and it goes from zero to infinity. Zero is not included. It never really touches the y equals zero, which is why I have a parentheses. Okay, let's talk about this graph. f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 3 in parentheses squared. Well, this is very similar to our f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. This has been shifted to the left 3. Remember, when it's inside there with the function, it's right or left, but be very careful. It's opposite of what you may think. So I've got to take this graph and go to the left 3. Well, it looks like my horizontal asymptote is still at y equals 0, but it looks like my vertical asymptote has changed. It was at x equals 0. But when I moved my graph to the left, my vertical asymptote is now x equals negative 3. What about my domain and range? The domain, it looks like all of my x's are included up to negative 3. And then I have a vertical asymptote. And then it looks like my graph, this is, my graph is the blue function here. Starts again after negative 3, and it goes to infinity. What about my range? Do you see any negative y's? No. It looks like my graph starts right after y equals 0. Remember, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. But right after 0, my graph starts, and I, my graph does go up, up, up as my y's are getting bigger. My range is 0 to infinity.
Okay, here's the graph. f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. Well, I want you to graph the function 1 over x squared minus 5. Okay, so this still begins as the 1 over x squared. But this time, my function just moves down 5. So it looks like my vertical asymptote is still x equals 0, but my horizontal asymptote changed. It is now y is equal to negative 5. Well, let's talk about the domain and the range of this function. The domain is negative infinity. It takes a break at that vertical asymptote, x equals 0, and then it starts back. And now let's look at the range a little bit more. So it looks like below y equals negative 5, I don't see any of this green function. It starts above y is equal to negative 5, and it goes up, up, up. My range starts at negative 5, but does not include negative 5, and it goes to infinity. Okay, let's graph f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 3 in parentheses squared minus 5. We have two shifts here. Okay, this does begin as a graph of 1 over x squared. But I am going to shift this graph, this function, to the left 3 and down 5. So the left 3 and down 5. So you should see that I have a new vertical asymptote. It is x is equal to negative 3, but look at the denominator. When is that denominator going to equal 0? Yes, when x is negative 3. I have a new horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5. <clears throat> okay, last problem, but this has several shifts in it. f of x is equal to negative 2 over x plus 4 in parentheses squared minus 3. This is the graph of 1 over x squared. But what do we do to this graph to get to the final graph? So let's talk about the shifts. Well, it looks like our graph will be shifted to the left 4. It will be a stretch by 2. And I will reflect it over the x-axis. And then I will go down 3. Wow. So let's work on these shifts. I'm going to take my graph. And I'm going to move it to the left 4. Now I'll stretch it by 2. I won't demonstrate that. I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. And then I'm going to move it down 3. So it's something like that. And I graphed it on my computer so you could see the final graph. Let's talk about the domain and range. My domain will be negative infinity up to negative 4, where I have a vertical asymptote, and then negative 4 to infinity. What about my range? My range will be negative infinity, and it will go up to negative 3 and stop. So this is my new function.